My talk's gonna base off uh, mainly kind of more some orthoplastic approaches, but also some osseous musculoskeletal approach with his X-Fix, a little more advanced maybe. But, but the concept is very minimal in terms of X-Fix usage for this, in terms of motion and need for static positioning. But and Dr. Green was supposed to be here going through some speed frames, so I deleted a lot of my speed frame stuff, but I'll touch on a few things that uh, with the speed frame so we can go over. I use the speed frame for quite a bit of things, stabilization, static stabilization, Charcot, a lot of trauma, a lot of um, uh, hind foot, ankle, leg trauma, uh, and then positioning my orthoplastic procedures. So, you know, we use X-Fix for a lot of different things. Uh, in terms of looking at arthrodesis and X-Fix, obviously we, we go anywhere from the midfoot, forefoot, midfoot, rear foot, and ankle as uh, Rocchio showed as well just all different cases that we've done. I've done using different frames in, in conceptualization of uh, levels of osseous positioning and arthrodesis. Um, speed frame in general, it's just such a wonderful frame. It comes compact. Oftentimes I'll use it with a foot plate and a 5 8 ring. Um, I like the foot plate a little bit because if you've got some splaying in the forefoot, sometimes when the 5 8 ring comes around, it'll hit. And you don't have a lot of uh, play in the transverse and frontal plane. So the foot plate gives you a little more adaptation. Um, you know, again, looking at static, fracture reduction, angular correction, and stabilization, all which we'll go over and talk about, you know, uh, safe areas and then why we're putting pins and wires in certain zones and why we're doing it. So, um, you know, going over that and the versatility, we'll talk about that, 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 about that in the lab. I love these for fracture reduction, especially hind foot, ankle, even calc fractures. Um, we, I use them quite a bit, and, and uh, even though CL is a wonderful pin-to-bar system, I'll go to this almost primarily because I can get everything reduced, and oftentimes I'm not going back and doing an infix unless I'm complementing infix and xfix at that time uh, because of the, 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 the triplane element of it. Um, again, this was actually in a cadaveric lab. You can see where the wonderful thing about this speed frame, especially um, utilizing pins and wires off the struts, it's the only strut on the market that you can put a clamp th that holds a pin or uh, a strut, um, I'm sorry, a pin or a wire on the strut and compress and hold it without damaging the strut itself. There's no other strut that I know of that'll take that sort of pressure. Um, and this is just an example of reduction in, uh, with a bimal, if you will. Um, a real life case em emulating the same thing. I look at these like a macro and a micro. So you go in, you can put the frame on the leg, you know, superior and inferior construct, get everything where you want it to be, and then you can go in and do your things, or then you start chancing various areas. You can throw all the wires and bring things in. You can throw your regular pins and, and, and different components and literally hand drive them, lock it, take the frame, lock it. Oh Lord, go back and lock it. Um, so you can keep manipulating until you get it where you need it to be. And oftentimes you're, you're pretty much done. And that's accomplished by, you know, placing these pins wherever you want. Before, these were actually the older uh, clamps and collets where you had to slide on, but now they clip on. So you can get going and go, damn it, I wanted one here and here. And, and if, if that were the case, you could pop this, this pops off and put them on here. But now you just clamp wherever you want and you can go wires and pins in, in any direction. So again, reduction of fracture from the leg to the, to, to the, the side of the core of the deformity. And this is just illustrating various areas in which we can put our hardware. Um, Kind of sky's the limit on your imagination and also just your level of expertise. Every time I do a frame, I try to think about different ways to do it. And you know, the, the old cliche, you drive home and think about your case, do it. I do it all the time. We talk all the time and just be very critical of what you're doing. Perhaps you'll d discover some new ways to do things. Uh, another bi fracture with a speed frame. Um, just some examples of what we've done. So on the left here, it's a, just an old, old fracture we did, this is probably got 20 years ago, with infix and then going across the board here. Here's a, another one we did some X-fix and infix. I in fact got this all the way down and wasn't gonna use a plate, but the residents, of course, they talk to India a lot, but uh, you know, needing the help um, and training, so we'll throw that in. Another example on this side, previous of that guy, another example over here, so I think that might've been a duplicate. Um, going down the line, more fracture elements, you got a nice one here, coming back, stabilization. The nice thing about this is how many people have struggled getting things out to length when you're doing all infix, which is fine, but I don't like to struggle after 22 years of practice, and we've got some legends in the, the room, I'm sure can talk more about that, but uh, 
but I don't like to struggle and I want it easier and smarter. So uh, oftentimes I'll use the devices just like, unlike a pin to bar per se, and, and I like pin to bar, but this is, you can get this out and hold and fix and hold and fix and hold and move. So you're, you're, you're slowly tap dancing with it to where you want it. And then you can do your dial in your compression. So, or, or, or stabilization and then in fix if need be. So that's what I love about this frame. And we'll show you how to apply multiple componentry once you get your global positioning, your length pattern back out, and then placing if you wanna just leave it. Like I said, oftentimes we'll go into cases and I won't even go back and put an in fix if I'm by myself. Kind of an onlay overlay, I am nailing with X fix. People can argue we're just putting a glorified cast. Oftentimes if I do it, I'm gonna do it because I think my bone stock's crap and maybe I'm not gonna rely on my nail as an axial low in compression. It may not unionize. Uh, I've got backup, I can leave the frame on, I can put the frame on. So for me, if I do an overlay with a frame and, and a nail and infix, I don't want it to go against the AO concept of my infix. It's gotta complement what you're doing. So no obliquity, no, no, no anything that's gonna mess up your infix or it's not really, really that appropriate per, perhaps. So this is another example, we can, we can go over these as well. Um, again, uh, Rocky showed this, just other types of midfoot arthrodesis reductions, butt frames, sky's the limit. You can go in and make 90 modifications of a butt frame or whatever frame and call whatever frame you want it to be. That's the great thing about uh, external fixation, I think. So moving a little bit to orthoplastic approach, this has been a, a passion of mine probably for the last 12 years or so of my practice and along with nerve, uh, nerve reconstruction and been working with a lot of really wonderful people around the country and the world on and, um, collaboration. So we'll talk about a few things with, with orthoplastic approach. So this is a case on a guy, just a classic Charcot case uh, was done. This was before someone did infix, x fix. It went to crap, came to the ER, was just a mess, took everything off, and this is what we had left. So just like Tom said, and, and Guido and everyone else, all the, all the classic principles, Take everything out. This is pretty much a PMMA made out of making like a talonavicular bone. So, you know, either amp it or you take everything out. So take everything out. Temporary stabilization of speed frame. This was on for probably a good almost two months, going in multiple biopsies, making sure we have clean margins on all quadrants and all fronts. Then you go back and recon. So when I wanted to recon this, I'm almost gonna do a tibial calc to a whole midfoot front face to the hind foot. So you're looking at a triangulation and praying for hopeful pseudoarthrosis in or, 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 or best. And at the end of the day, we all know Charco and all these other things, you're shooting for braceable limbs. If these patients think they're gonna go back to their shoes, as we all know, I tell them right off the bat, if you're not ready for a crow boot for the rest of your life, a, a high Arizona or something forever, let's just get the BKA, you're gonna be better off, much better quality. And if, if they're up for that, and I think educating your patients well, this is a brevis flap. You have many different uh, variants. Um, in this case, I like it because it had my length. A lateral hemisoleus probably will have a little more thickness, would get down there, but be a little bit too more robust. And the concept here is dissecting this out and actually harvesting the brevis, keeping your perforators intact, and then bringing it down around. This is just an example of going, finding your uh, SPN. Bringing this down and looping it, sorry, looping this within the articulation. So tip calc, midfoot to hind foot. I'm actually looping this down around at a pivot point, dopplering the entire time not to lose perfusion. And imagine like an octopus sealing over that whole joint. It's gonna grab onto those bones and just literally suck down onto it and start infiltrating blood work to it. You've got a backyard with dirt, you're putting down seeds, nothing's happening. You lay on sod, irrigation system, done. You've got nutrients, you've got antibiotics, you've got help to remineralize processes. This is an example of the same thing. I would have done it a little differently. I did, I did a temporary front facing screw. So you got tib calc, mid foot to hind foot, front faced everything here, and then, and then fixation. So many different ways to fixate. This is going on a sagittal plane, compressing, you know, inferior to post, in, in, superior to inferior. And then this we use simply a, a, a bent wire techniques, bringing things back in this way. I would have probably done this a little differently today, maybe with a, a, an element of a full ring and four struts and get more angular fixation uh, and compression. Again, gold braceable limb. 
So now th I did go back in full disclosure and we resected all this, but this guy's in a, between a Crobin and a high Arizona and functioning, and this was done a while ago. Another case just to show XFIX sub MPJ ulcer. Um, how, what do you do? You know, obviously compliance is an issue in weight bearing. So this was a case we went in, did full resection, clean the area up. He had a hypertrophic tibial sesamoid, no osteo, but we resected the tibial sesamoid. Prepped, not probably my, my first choice, but I wanted to try this case and it went well, only because I found Doppler will signals way off the medial plantar coming in the abductory canal all the way up, which typically you're gonna stop somewhere in this zone. And at your pivot point, you're probably gonna choke off and it won't work. Sometimes you can use an FHB if your muscle's robust, and you can flip it up over this way. But in this instance, we dissected out, and this is just a cadaveric dissection we've done, illustrating the intense vasculature coming off the medial plantar up to the adductory canal and seeing all these vessels. Now, as you guys, as you dissect these out, it's a hell of a lot easier to dissect the leg than here because you need to get at least one or two of these guys to attach when you flip and pivot point forward. So here's the harvest off the origin, place in. At this point, you're gonna also Doppler these regions. I always inoculate or, or fenestrate and or apply a mixture of BMAC and PRP over these areas to help jumpstart the region metabolically. And then a simple um, mini, and we'll, which we'll go over in the lab, they're, they're, they're wonderful. So that was placed on there and held, and I, I apologize, I don't have a post-op, but the guy actually did okay. He broke down a little bit in, in custom inserts and everything, he, he, he ended up doing okay. Uh, reverse uh, um, uh, medial plantar flap, um, just showing uh, some elements, um, how you do it, and I know this is an orthoplastic lab, but this is a case where you'd want to mobilize or at least offload as well. Um, reverse surls, um, same thing, you want this pivot point, we can go on and on again, how these are successful in venous congestion and the arterial inflow and technique and adipofascial dissection. But the point is when you cross this ankle, if you don't stabilize this type of flap, you're in trouble in terms of uh, um, salvageability and, and motion is the enemy. But with that flap, it's actually a congestive, venous congestive issue. Um, there's a guy, Coleman's in the back here. He's, I think, on a conference call with his residents uh, doing suit interviews. but. Uh, Coleman is uh, one of the, there's a lot of wonderful folks in this audience, Dr. Hewitt as well, but he's a master at his level in orthoplastics. His work is unbelievable. So if you guys have other questions as well, I'm happy to answer, but he, I'll give him some props. His work is amazing. I admire a lot of what he does. Um, another, another uh, again, example with speed frame here um, and using uh, assistance. This is actually uh, an old pylon fracture incision went bad. Um, they couldn't get it closed, clearly too much motion, AT motion, EDL motion, um, got everything converted clean. Some, some, this is a case where you can do some uh, translational fraps in the forefoot adipofascial flaps. We chose a brevis because of its length. We can go from a lateral to anterior approach. Again, you're seeing the dissection, keeping all your perforators in check, again, a whole nother um, um, uh, topic of discussion, pivot point. This is where we're flapping it up and covering the front of that ulcer after a wide excision, wide margins. This is an example of tunneling. I don't really do this much, but this is one where it worked. It's like you're bringing the garden hose around the house and it kinks and you don't realize it. So you gotta be careful when you pivot and bring this down, especially if there's swelling in any of the curl compartments, you'll choke off your flap. But you bring it down and around. Again, we're prepping the region with all our goodness all our good constituents within the bone marrow aspirate, concentrate and PRP. This is where you can decide if you wanna do a primary split thickness graft immediately. I stage a lot, I'll do a, a bilayer graft um, because I want the muscle to earn it. If you go ahead and take another site and do your split thickness right away and throw it on there, um, you oftentimes will um, ruin, ruin a whole site if the muscle primarily didn't work. Again, external fixation, straight mobilization, when you get good at these frames, you can get this frame on in 15, 20 minutes. It's, it's four wires, two here, two here, maybe five, one in the forefoot. Very simple, very easy. I won't go into this, I just put this in. Uh, new approach to uh, um, TR incision or anterior incisions. Uh, medial, uh, we all know medial, the TA, tendon, extending anterior, uh, and then um, compared to uh, the, the, the old concept of going medial, the TA, and then lateral to the HL. Um, again, there's all these uh, angiosomes and peforosomes we forgot about. 
We make these incisions. We talk about how they dehisce because of the patient's compliance and morbidity. We're blowing through vasculature. If, I, if you take anything from all this fancy stuff, please take that we're taught to make incisions over musculoskeletal easement of physicality. And remember your microvasculature. We have failure because we're blowing through things. Or someone did a previous ankle fracture and you go back into revise. How much did they go through and, and uh, not, not knowingly or intentionally injure that area and things don't heal? So remember your vasculature, go back and think about it and study it. We can talk about this five, 10, 15 rules of perfusion and uh, perforators up the leg. And you can see, um, just real quickly, at the, at the immortis, every five centimeters, there's gonna be a major perforator coming off. I could take a Doppler and Doppler everyone's leg in a high 90 percentile, we're gonna find these perforators on every single person, every person. You can see them coming off right here, five, 10, 50, all the way up, and depending on what's going on. So the concept is you come down, it, don't go straight this, you're gonna curve around because the anterior lateral and anterior med medial angiosomes meet right at that zero mortis level. We, we spent a lot of time on this and wrote a paper on it. So again, real quick, similar incision. This was a video the auto didn't come out of showing the Dopplerization, but again, you don't want that uh, AT tendon exposed, which is gonna go right down to your total. Um, the last thing we need is an infected ankle. So we want coverage quickly. Again, options are, um, lateral uh, perineal brevis or perineal brevis flap or lateral hemisoleus. Also, you can do adipofascial. Just different anatomic um, elements when you do these flaps. You want the vasculature. So one or two perforators will actually perfuse a 10 centimeter long piece of tissue. And you want to make sure that vasculature is still there. And this is just lots and lots and lots of dissection and learning from folks to teach you these principles and pearls. You're laying this over there, not just covering the tendon, but it's going to make the whole area healthier and heal and be better. When you're done, uh, stabilization, easy speed frame, uh, Provena vac, whatever vac, whatever you want, Pico, whatever. Um, I'm gonna do one more case here at the end. This is just a, uh, a posterior Achilles we did. Uh, two year history of an Achilles, performed the flat, went around, split thickness. It looks like six and a half weeks, eight and a half weeks, 10, 10, 12, five, 14, done. So it took us 16 weeks to heal this. Someone's dicking around with it, part of my French, for two years in a wound center. I go to wound centers, nothing wrong with wound centers, but you know, get it into the right hands. Um, one more, okay, this is a good case real quick. So this, this ties in basically orthoplastic musculoskeletal and nerve. So this is a young man, chronic ulcer lateral foot. They resected the fifth ray. He still has osteo in the base of his fourth and cuboid. Um, offered amputation. So he sent to us, we went in, primarily resected out the bad bone. There's our interop x-ray. Um, we actually did, this was staged, we actually did biopsies before I took back in, in, so that, in full disclosure to make sure that other peripheral segment of bone was fresh and clean, and it was. So after resection, decide to harvest. This was gonna be a lateral hemisoleus or perineal brevis flap. Also, we're gonna also augment and de-innervate his pain. So we're gonna do a loop anastomosis of superficial perineal to sural. Again, another lecture, we can talk about that on the side of how to do a lot of de of pain and also targeted motor re for decreasing in pain in amps. Big topic now in the neurosurgical world. But we're harvesting this muscle for, for a few different reasons. The second thing is we're gonna harvest the, the, the a section of the fibula with attached perforators from the perineal. We're gonna section that off with the arteries attached, we're gonna bring it down to our inlay, inset it inlay, and we're gonna do some micro-attachment of the, that perforator branch to a branch of the lateral um, uh, medial plantar uh, artery structure. So that's inlay, there's an example of that. I didn't show the, all the, it, spent, it, took an, it took about an hour to attach that under the scope. So not an hour, maybe 40 minutes. So uh, we didn't show that part. Little stabilization in fix. That's what it looked like intra-op. Deinnervation, loop anastomosis, so I'm, I'm decreasing his pain content in that whole structure and zone. There's repairing in the, the conduit. So we destabilized them, right? We took part of the fibula, so this is just, we actually put two syndesmotic screws in to stabilize his ankle. Um, there's just picture of the nerve. That's when we're done. Flaps inset, BMAC PRP. 
did an uh, Integra two layer, not a primary split thickness, because these typically have some failure rates in the distal tip and the insertion. Um, X fix, post op. This is, this is why I don't do a primary split thickness off the bat. Huge hematoma, fluctuant as hell, had to drain it. Then all of a sudden it sat, it got boggy. I was concerned for infection, everything was okay. That's what he looked at nine weeks. 10 weeks clinical, 12 weeks clinical, 14, there we go, so 26, a long time. But this is a great example of how you took a guy, young 32 year old, that they're gonna amp his leg and you can combine our ortho podiatric level, our orthoplastic and our nerve. I get a lot of patients sent to me now for pain from pain clinics. We're doing a lot of nerve work, which we'll talk about in a separate uh, on the side if you want, which is something you can really, um, really make your practice robust in your area. So just summary points, but in general, XFIX is amazing for many things, but in my world of orthoplastics and other, uh, other items, static fixation, angular fixation, reducing motion, and simple conceptualization of XFIX is, uh, is a way to go. And we'll go over all these easy points um, in the lab. If you guys want to do any dissection when we're done, if anyone wants to do any flaps or tissue, tissue work or even just identifying nerves, let me know. I'll be happy to dissect that out because I always do it at the end anyway. I never leave a lab without taking advantage and ripping the legs apart. Because one thing with this is if you guys want to do orthoplastic and you want to dissect your butts off all the time, I dissect almost twice a month with my residents, thousands of limbs just to learn the anomalies. So.